Uh, good afternoon. Can you hear me? Hi, I'm Deborah Wells, and it's my assignment today to introduce or present our distinguished guest, Mr. Derek Watson Brown. Uh, Derek Watson Brown holds an MFA in creative writing from American University. He is the founding poet in residence of Bus Boys and Poets. He is a graduate of the Cave Canon and VONA or V-O-N-A summer workshops and is a participating author in the Penn Faulkner Foundation's Writers in Schools program. His work has been published and featured in such print journals and online publications as Race Bader, Color Lines, and Bayou Magazine. His debut collection of poetry, Wisdom Teeth, was released in 2011 through PM Press. His second collection of poetry, a chapbook entitled On All Fronts, was released along with two other poetry chapbooks in a bound series from Upper Rubber Boot Press entitled Floodgates, Volume 5, March of 2019. He resides in Mount Rainier, Mount, excuse me, Mount Rainier, Maryland. He is an adjunct professor of English at Prince George's County Com Community College, Elago, Maryland, and a creative writing teacher at the Duke Ellington School of the Arts. You can follow him on social media on Facebook, Instagram at the original Dirk Weston Brown or through DirkWestonBrown.com. It is my honor to to present to you, Mr. Dirk Weston Brown. All right. Hey, well, what's up? Can everyone hear me? Yeah. All right. Good. Good. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, and I definitely want to say thank you to. Uh, uh, oh, gracious. Just just thank you to UDC. Thank you to uh, a professor. And I always get your, your Diaz. Is that fine? Diaz is fine. OK, <laughs> Professor Diaz, because I don't want to you know, try to mess it up. But um, thank you so much to you to UDC. Thank you to Sigma Tau Delta. Um, and yeah, it's just great to be here. Um, the virtual circumstances, I'm, I'm now getting used to it. But um, yeah, when uh, Professor Diaz said, hey, can you come through and, you know, take part in this reading? I was like, no, certainly. So here I am. And uh, as always, I just wonder um, how you would like me to read. This is Black History Month and there's so many ways that I could go. And um, my tradition, of course, is um, definitely is spoken word, but it's also storytelling. I'm from Charlotte, North Carolina. And when I moved up here in 2001 to get my MFA in creative writing, the poet Ethelbert Miller said to me, he said, DC is a great place to be a writer. And uh, one of my, I would say mentors when I was in the grad program at American University, um, uh, uh, Dr. Keith Leonard said to me, don't just hang out in the MFA program, but find your community in DC. And I'm so thankful that I was able to do that because they, it was really a nice to find a community to be able to grow as a writer among other writers. So. Thank you for having me. And uh, I'm gonna start with a tradition that I was taught um, going to the open mics on U Street and such, especially uh, when I think about one of the one of my my mentors, uh, Tony Asante Lightfoot. And when she would do an open mic, she said, before you get started, she said, y'all got to do some OPP. People were like, what's that? And she say, other people's poetry. So I'm gonna share some other people's poetry work from people who I consider my friends before I even get to some of my poems. But being that this is Black History Month, I'm going to start with, uh, I'm going to do some little book flex. And I don't know if you can see my bookshelf behind me. That's just one of them, but I've got several. So I'm going to do a little showing off. So you can't see this. This is a chat book, uh, which is like an early version of, it's like a, like a pamphlet. Um, and I, that's how kind of I started. It's like built, made with cardstock and um, staples and all sorts of stuff but this is a classic classic um chat book by don l lee otherwise known as hockey mata booty one of the like premier um uh, black arts movement poets and so this is his chat book that was created on broadside press uh one of the historical presses created by uh dudley randall so you can see a young hockey mata booty with his afro back there and so I'm just really glad to have this. So I'm just going to read 
uh, a poem. And um, before I go, how much time do I have, uh, Professor Diaz? Just let me know. So I don't want to run over it because I want the open mic to be great and I don't want to shut anybody down. So how much I time? You do can that? take uh, 10 or 15 minutes. We're here all ears, enjoying the experience. All right, cool. There we go. 10 to 15. I got it. All right. Haki Matabui. And this poem is called Judy One. She's the camera's subject, the sun for colored film. Her smile is like clear light bouncing off the darkness of the Mediterranean at nighttime. We all know it. Her smile, when it's working, moves like seawater, always going somewhere strongly. And that's from uh, the chat book. We Walked Away in the New World, uh, Haki Matabuti, also know at that time as Donna Lee. I have to put this back in the vault because this is one of those old, this is a collector's item. So I'm gonna put that away off camera so you all can't see where I hide it. And uh, next up, what I wanted to share is some other poems by a few DC writers. I gotta represent uh, the District of Columbia most definitely because I've lived here since 2001 and a lot of my good friends are from the area. So I'm going to read some work by some native DC folks. Um, I'm going to start off with a poet I met when they were in middle school. I used to host an open mic at Bus Boys and Poets. And when this poet was like a young kid for their birthday, they wanted to go to come to the open mic. And I was like, all right, cool. And then later I would run into this young poet at the Hurston Wright uh, Youth Writers Summer Program and such. And I always kept my eye on this young poet as they went from graduate from high school and going to, um, of course, I can't think of the name of the of the, of the university right now, um, but if y'all familiar with Taylor Johnson, this is Taylor Johnson, and the book is called Inheritance. And this poem is called Pennsylvania Ave, Southeast. Bless the boys riding their bikes straight up at midnight, touching, if only briefly, holding hands as they cross the light to independence. Bless them for from the side, the one on the red bike looks like me, his red brown hair loose against the late summer static heat. The boy who is not me, see how I did that, fixes his mouth to say something I will never hear. I love you, or I'm so sad, though more than likely, catch up. Bless the boy who is me on his bike because he is, was a witness to my witnessing and did not turn away, did not make of me a disappeared burned thing. Instead, not as boys do. Bless the distance and the knowing there. What my mind makes of these boys. Bless that long hallway I'm always going through. Bless what could be mine or me. Bless the boys I wanted to be or wanted. So Taylor Johnson representing DC. All right. Um, so my poems going. Oh, thank you. I saw some, some virtual applause. I appreciate that. Um, and I'll just share a few more poems. Some are just I'm working on a new manuscript called Soft Machine. Um, and it was at the urging of my mom, who I always, she always says she's my first publisher. You know, back in fifth grade, she published my poems on a little, uh, the little um, printer, you know, the dot matrix, that that little printer that kind of came up like that. And then she, we like laminated them and stuff. And she sent them to like my family members and was like, my baby's gonna be a poet. He's so great. Oh, you know, he's gonna be so good. And here we are. But she's always said she wanted me to put Put together a collection of love poems. So finally, after much hemming and hawing, and after a couple of books, I said, All right, fine, I'll do it. And I love you, but I'll do some love poems. But um, this love poem, I guess, is just from the sun. And especially since we're all kind of anywhere, definitely in because of Rona. So this is a poem that I wrote uh, about where I live and how I have a roof deck on my building. And during the first few months of, of, of the lockdown, I was so glad that the roof deck was there so I could go upstairs and my building's really small so you could have the space to yourself. And it was nice just to be outside. And I thought about what would the sun be saying to all of us right now as we were coming out of the winter and into the spring. And so this is called What the Sun Says to Me When I Appear for Our Daily Meeting After Being Inside for Long Distance Learning and Teaching on Zoom. There you are, my little brown circuit. You fuel cell of bone, stardust, and ancestry. Let me get a look at you. Bring your face closer. Turn around. Let me drink you in. Got your outside clothes on, huh? Come on, love. Sit with me and breathe. Feels good, huh? 
my beaming smile breaking bread in the echo of these quiet streets. No, don't explain a damn thing, baby. Do you want to talk? Don't want to talk? That's fine. You want to pray? Fine. Go on. Cry, scream, spit, curse, boil over. I'll be up here. My downcast child, just let me look at you. You still a wonder. You still someone's dream and your ancestors' wildest imagination on two legs. You're their walking wildest reality. Go ahead, go on, get them breaths in. Forget about screen time. I missed you. Stay with me as long as you want. Now you better quit peeking out that window when you see me next time and just come on out, mask on or off. Come get some of this free wattage love on the house. So yeah, that's for. No, that's for snap. All right, I'm, it. I'm telling you, the sun is, is definitely my friend, so I'm very thankful for that. Um, hey, Mr. Petty, good to see you, representing American University. All right, my my fellow MFA, my fellow MFA person. All right, good to see you. Uh oh, I think we're frozen. Hopefully you all can hear me. I'm not sure what's going on, but um, uh oh. Oh no. Can y'all hear me? Yeah, I think some technical difficulties. Great. Yeah, okay. That's a little bit. We'll see what happens. I might have to log off and log on again, but uh, we'll see. Let's see. Let me find right. you. Uh oh. I knew it. Mm, bring, me back. You... bring me back. Where's the thing? Oh, I see what's happening. Okay. So yeah, so log back in. It must be something with WebEx. So you can log back in. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I wanted to uh, rem remind you that you can put your name in the chat if you want to share with us your, uh, your poetry. And uh, I already have five participants, please. Write your name if you want to participate. So we see you. See we hear you. I hear you. Good. Okay. okay. Sorry about that. You totally hey. crashed. It's okay. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm hoping it doesn't happen again, but technology, boy, I tell you. What are we gonna do? All right. So um, I'll just share just a few more poems. Thank you so much for your time and sorry about the technical difficulties. Um, and this next love poem is, uh, you know, I love to swim. I miss the water. And uh, I'm so happy that I got a, uh, I used to swim at the Prince George's Sports and Learning Complex. And there's a bunch of old black men that used to swim with me and such. And so this is called Locker Room Talk for the Aqua Bros, the Melanated Merman series, for the pool crew at the PG Sports and Learning Complex. Locker room talk. How you doing, youngster? Young blood, young man, is what these men call me when I step into the locker room to slip off my work duds, pull on my swim trunks, swim cap, two of them, goggles and earplugs. These men of all sizes, slim to zaftig, gut and paunch and old man stubborn muscles, black men slipping into their 60s, cruising into their 70s, and one smooth octogenarian all here to swim. Some are here by their doctor's orders trying to stiff arm diabetes and run back to minute hand or get their knees right to chase grandbabies. Uh, you married youngster? I say no, but they say don't rush. I say, but I'm 40 something. And they say, oh, well then you now kind of know a little bit, finally. Main man, one of them tells me, I went from my wife needing a briefing about where I was going and how long to her asking, don't you got somewhere to be? Man, it's a trip you putting in work for the long haul. I say, I'm making changes to feel better, look better, and be better for me. Nah, says Mr. 80-year-old, you in training to go the distance, and I don't mean a marathon. So what's her name, partner? The locker room laughs, and I like to imagine these men would be, my, be the friends my dad could have made if he were still alive and not the introvert that had him a hermit and living at a YMCA. These black men that survived tours in Southeast Asia, heroines lullaby crew, talk sports, black history facts, cancer victories, burying wives, friends, children, and curse their low carb diets. 
They talk yard work and who they used to be before getting caught tipping out on their wives for the third and final time. They talk death and mostly about when their bodies went from can't to maybe to dream on. Deep sighs and grunts, dry miles, Davis raspy laughs, slaps fives and heavy hand daps with loose flesh fingers. Makes me not feel so old or obsolete, especially when we all submerge, hit that blue water as weightless schools of brown bodied fish, all black and buoyant and oxygenated, gilled and rippling our waters. So those former fellows at the pool. Um, and yeah, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. And I think I just dropped the last poem um and thank you so much for your time and i can't wait to hear the open mic that's that's what i'm really here for so i'm just gonna let y'all know right now this is what i'm ready to hear um and so this is from a section called jump back and kiss myself love poems for me because we all need love poems for ourselves and so this is uh yeah it's a short one the title's longer than the poem and it's called to the silver hair to the silver haired elderly white lady in, in silver diner who kept looking back at me from her booth seat with a look of fear or maybe wonder as I ate. And the poem is, yeah, I am so very beautiful and unbothered by your gaze. So, you know, that's it. So I thank you. Okay, we got one more. Thank you, thank you. Um, and there's, there's so many more. I'll just give you this last one. And this is memorized. And this is from my first book called Wisdom Teeth. And I'll close with this because it's for my dad. And we had a complicated relationship. But even before he passed, we had cleared up a lot of stuff. And so this poem is called Legacy. My father's vocabulary is quite extensive, but he still can't find the words for I love you, nor the synonyms, acronyms, or abbreviations. I guess this is why I am a poet. I inherited the words lost to his dictionary. I am the next volume updated. I am the New Testament. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure, UDC. Thank you for having me. Thanks. All right. Oh, look at all the, the virtual applause. This is dope. All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. I think that is very important at UDC that we celebrate and include DC authors. So we welcome you anytime that we have open mics and hopefully we can have you again when we are physically in the building. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but thank you so much. Uh, now we're going to proceed with Dr. Krothammer is going to introduce our next section of the program. All right. Sorry, <laughs> had to find the mute button again. Um, hold on, let me just turn to my screen here. So our next section of the program is to honor UDC Black history in our English program. And we're gonna have a question and answer about our past Black History Months and protest events. But now is when I get to introduce two of my colleagues um, Dr. Elsie Williams and Dr. Nassim Sahabzada. Uh, I, again, at the beginning, we talked about how many students here right now have had the uh, privilege of having them be your instructors. So I think we're going to start with Dr. Williams and then go on to Dr. Sahabzada. So Dr. Williams, it's your turn now. Good afternoon. Can you hear me well? Yes, we can. Uh, I'm just so moved by what I've heard thus far. What a gifted, gifted poet there, uh, Mr. Brown. Thank you. You're blessing us all. And thanks again to Sigma Tau Delta for bringing back memories, bringing back memories of the University of District of Columbia in our celebrations of African American History Month. Uh, of course, I, I'm looking at Dr. Petty and Dr. Sabzada who were most instrumental in standing by me as I struggled with this. Now, I think we have about 10 minutes, is that correct? Yes, uh, my student, Dagbara, about 10 minutes. I don't want to get wound up and um, 
sabotage this wonderful program. Questions and answers, I know, is what you're asking for. But sometimes you guys don't know what questions to ask. And so if you ask me something that I have to give, um, oh, my God, I don't want to quote Morgan Freeman, who used to say, what do, we, what do you need Black History Month for? You know, the guy who drove Miss Daisy? We don't need Black History Month, do we? Oh, well, we have had some people who have said that's to to us throughout the history of UDC. Uh, I remember when UDC was first consolidated, actually we were born in 1976, the three institutions rather than 1859 as some so acclaimed. During that particular time, um, uh, Dr. Sabzad and I, I don't think Matt had come on board yet and I don't think Dr. Helene was there, but that was a time when we we were proud because we were from the Federal City College and at the Federal City College, we had our blackness. Do you know we had our Leon Damas, the port of negritude. Did you know that we had CLR James, oh, the Marxist and the Shakespearean scholar. We had also Dr. Day Thorne, Caribbean scholar. And we had David Lever and Lewis, whom I wish I had followed, because he had the audacity to teach his class for three weeks and take off and do his research before the computer came along. Of course, he was fired. <laughs> but he has since turned out some beautiful books on Martin Luther King, et cetera. 1976, 1977, Dr. Sabzada probably remembers Sterling Brown. Oh, you remember Sterling Brown, how he came over and participated and read from his poetry. And I was just looking in my archives. I found a CD, uh, Dr. Krauthammer, of him actually reading it. So what an archival piece. I'd like to probably pass it on to Ms., uh, to you or Sigma Tau, Sigma Tau Delta. Now, UDC. I guess I was most active during uh, Barack Obama's tenure. Barack Obama, you know, our first eight years, every year of proclamation. And uh, after Barack Obama, I was a little quiet. I didn't know whether to ask for a proclamation. I thought I might not get commemoration as I might have gotten something else. But ever since 1976, African American History Month, has been that and we owe it to carter g woodson of course but more than that we owe it to um uh what's the president's name who followed nixon gerald ford gerald ford turned it into a legal holiday a celebration of african-american people and ever since then we've had a proclamation uh and we are very grateful for that, uh, I'd just like to put in a plug for Asala. Um, Carter G. Woodson's house on Ninth Street was saved, and it's a national landmark. But it would need it needs such sc young scholars as you, Muhammad. Um, it really does, Hernandez. They need people like you to help it out. Asala is very, very uh, growing, very, very old. And Carter G. Woodson has created everything and left everything right there for us. Now, going back to UDC, I'm going to invite Dr. Sabzada to come in. And pick up where, where I have forgotten. Can you hear? I can't uh -huh. hear you. Shall I mute myself? Unmute. You actually can have still five more minutes if you want. You can still have some more time, but I'm trying to unmute her. You're muted. Okay, so I'm requesting her to unmute. 
Hopefully she can see the request. Can you hear me, Dr. Sabzada? You still muted. Um, let me see. Am I muted or Sabzada? Oh, no, no, you. No, you're okay. But I'm trying to get her. So if she's in the app, which I don't think so, but it should be at the bottom of the screen. It says mute, stop video, share. Well, no, she might not have that one. Stop mute. Oh, uh, can I? Un I'm not the host, so I can't unmute her. I cannot unmute her. I have to. I sent her the request. Um, gotcha. She was unmuted okay. earlier. Maybe she can join us again. Maybe she can log out and come back. And maybe she'll be unmuted when she joins us. Because I don't know why she was unmuted earlier. And she's talking, bless her heart. Okay, can I just go ahead and you try to do that and give me the. Yeah, so go ahead. You want me to, when you yeah. want me to firm la bouche, I will do that. Uh, now, why Black History Month and why February? You know, Black people are so. Uh, we're suspicious of America, you know, paranoid. Because just because you're paranoid doesn't mean they're not out to get you. So we're wondering why did they give us the shortest month of all to celebrate Black History Month? That's a classic joke. But it's not that way, really. In February, we have Abraham Lincoln, the great Republican. That's when the Republican Party meant something for us. The death of Abraham Lincoln, the murder, the assassination. And then we have the, the birth of Frederick Douglass. Some say his birthday is the 12th. Some say the 14th. Some want to choose the 14th because that's the day of love. And Nikki Giovanni says, black love is black wealth. And by the way, we did have Jackie, Nikki Giovanni um, at the university. Um, had to postpone it several times. What's because of the snow and another time? Wow, because of that awful, awful shooting. You remember that awful shooting at, um, what was that, where she's teaching? So we've done some great things. We had Malcolm X's daughter there, the university has, and we somehow finagled to become a part of the university-wide program. I'm not sure, Dr. Subzada, uh, I'm not sure um, that, yeah, I'm gonna keep going, she's getting on. Okay, now here's the deal. So, can you hear me now? I surely can. Well, you can't talk anymore, that's it, that's it. I appreciate it, je, <laughs> je m'assume. Thank you, Oof. thank you, and thank you, Elsie, for do doing all the talking because I don't have too much to say. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Naseem Sabzada, and I was, shall I say, dragged into Black History Month by Elsie. In 2012, I think it was Elsie, when we said, I said, Elsie, you know, there's some fantastic poets. Look at all this protest poetry by Black. Why don't we do something? And she said, yeah, we got to get something going. So that's when we started. And we did a program. And um, I did a presentation, which was Enduring Voices. And I looked at all the Black poets from the beginning, slaves' time to the end. And I, I read out different poems, uh, the protest. We had a fantastic program going. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. And I had a copy of it. See, I don't think you can see it, can you? But Elsie had planned this whole program. It was so fantastic and she got me involved in it. She said, no, you have to read poetry and you have to come. So we said, why don't we get the community involved? We sent out an invitation and we didn't expect such a large gathering. It was wall to wall in the auditorium. We, we didn't have any space. I think two schools Elsie turned up for that and nobody gave us any money. And nobody encouraged us. In fact, they were hoping we'd get discouraged, but Elsie and myself, as poor as we were, we, were, we kept going and Elsie said, do you have any gifts from Pakistan we can wrap up? I said, I haven't been to Pakistan this year. Don't have any, any gifts to wrap up. But you know, we tried to do something. She brought all her library in. She started to wrap up all her books and we were giving those as gifts to all the school children that came. 
it was a fantastic session that we had. The next year we had it, Matt was there, Matt brought all his students, they read poetry. So, you know, it was, for me, Black History Month was so good, but we got no encouragement. We didn't get too much encouragement from the institution, but we kept going until the institution, until UDC got involved, you know. But Elsie was, she was a soldier, she was tireless, she kept going. Late at night, you know, we would go two days running, nonstop. And uh, I got dragged into it until one day I got the shock of my life. In comes Mr. Gordon, God bless his soul, he just died. And I, and he's talking to Elsie and I'm sitting over there, of course, quiet because I can't, I can't afford to talk, you know. And Mr. Uh, Gordon said, uh, well, I'm taking over the Black History Month. So I said, why? But we were doing it. And then he turned around and said, and who are you? So when he said, who are you? Then, then, I, then I knew I've got to keep my place a little bit, you know. I said, well, I was one of the organizers with uh, Elsie, you know. So they took, they took it over and that was the end of that, of invol involvement. Otherwise, we were doing a lot of presentations and the people that she asked to come over and to speak. We had uh, an archaeologist, Elsie, you would know the name, and Rufus, all those speakers that came in, I don't know, and you didn't pay them a penny, and they just kept coming and speaking, and it was wonderful. We did a fantastic celebration of Black History Month. So here we are, you know, once again, involved in Black History Month with the department, and thank you so much for inviting me to speak, Dagmara and Ada and all of you, I appreciate it, and for my students that are here, you know, I love you. Many of you were a pain, but I do love you, you know, and uh, I'll continue to love you. And uh, that's my Black History life and my Black History the week <clears throat> that I wanted to celebrate with you. I thank you for those wonderful memories and, re and gifts that I probably don't deserve, those comments. Uh, so uh, I, again, just want to kind of mention uh, another big program we had. Esther Roll. Some of you remember her from Good oh, Times. Esther Roll. <laughs> we got ambitious. This was in the early days. This is like you in the from 80s. California, in the... right, Elsie? She came in from California, right? Yes. Oh, we wow. sold ads. We, we had a program. The... Yes, I... We had a universe wide program, sold ads. Yep. Uh, Montgomery County, DC yep. government. Oh. We took, the, took over the gym. Uh, covered that wonderful floor, you know, the only basketball is supposed to touch, and put in the uh, <laughs> put in the chairs. Had a sit down dinner. I think we had some African food, and uh, uh, Esther Roll came in. And there's a wonderful joke. I'm not going to tell that. I mean, no, I no, no, say, Esther, don't don't tell that. Okay, I'll say that. But we embarrassed ourselves so much. That the next morning we had to give a breakfast for Esther Roll at this colleague's house. So I'll, I'll say that and make you call me and tell me, ask me what we did. It is so funny. Uh, so again, it's been a pleasure. I have used my artwork to also give away to speakers. And uh, if there's somebody there who likes a few books now or an art work, uh, just send me a note. I'm trying to clean house. I'm not ready to go home to heaven quite yet, but uh, send me a note and I'll send you something. Uh, have you come and pick up something from me? I'm so grateful though um, for the department. The English department has been so cooperative. And I have to say that Dr. Um, Krautheimer moves in a very, very quiet way and she will, she's a helper. She helps students and faculty, and that's wonderful. And I appreciate her for, for that. That's all I have to say. I'm not going to tell you anything negative about how we weren't allowed to, <laughs> to have a <laughs> black paraphernalia in the bookstore at one time. Yes. One time we had a president who called himself the change agent. You know, he was a change agent. Let me have, let me see how deep I can go in your pockets and pull out the university's money. But we actually, at one point, 
uh, Mr. Uh, Craig. At one point, we were not allowed to sing the national anthem. Exactly. Uh, we had to fight for that one. And um, sure. I got into trouble for that, but um, everything is good. Everything in its own time. So I'm hoping that what we can do with the young people here, we can revitalize this. I think one of the gifts of virtual learning is that it can make us more solidly stand together. I've never seen such wonderful audience as this. Dr. Krauthelm, every time she comes, she's speaking to the choir, two or three people, Sigma Tau Delta. So again, let's carry on in the spirit of, they call it the fire bird, but in reality, it's the phoenix. Thank you. It's like a resurrection, right? Resurrection. We've resurrected. <laughs> resurrected. Now, if you want me to talk more, I'll continue, but I don't, again, I don't want to take over.